The perforated film exhibits a grid of very fine holes through which the excess resin can flow into the downstream absorbent mat. The perforated film and the absorbent mat must be secured in place with adhesive tape if they are not to dislodge when placed into the film bag. The air is extracted from the film bag by means of the vacuum connection. The bag must be sealed well at all times. The vacuum connector can be prevented from attaching itself to the mold by a few plies of intermediate absorbent mat that also provides for a very uniform distribution of pressure. The vacuum bag remains connected to the vacuum pump until the resin has cured. Excess resin from the second surface laminate has been absorbed by the mat. The absorbent mat and the perforated film can be easily removed. The peel ply must be detached with care from the surface laminate to avoid damage or detachment from the honeycomb core. In order to demold the component, First loosen the edges carefully with a soft plastic spatula or wooden rod. Here it becomes visible that enough care has been taken in applying the release agent. The component demolds well. The recumbent bicycle seat has an area of 0.47 square meters but weighs only 865 grams. Its honeycomb sandwich structure gives it high flexural strength and its ergonomic design provides optimized seated comfort and sight retention. Components of complex geometry generally require split molds. The mold parts must allow alignment and connection to each other. A parting board defines the parting line. We have chosen an engine cowling mold for a model aircraft to demonstrate the layout of a split mold. First, the master pattern is attached to a support plate. Sealing the parting line to the support plate with plasticine prevents the mold resin from running behind the master pattern. Excess plasticine must be removed with soft tools if there are to be no scratches to the master pattern's sensitive surface. A second plate is attached parallel to the mold's parting line as demonstrated here. The component's contours 
must be projected onto the parting board with the aid of the angle. This angle features a diagonal hole for guiding the pencil. Our parting board takes the form of a coated particle board. The projected contours are sawn out with a little oversize. Spacer blocks position the parting board exactly to the height of the parting line. Before the parting board is attached, the master pattern is once again waxed around the parting line. If the mold halves are to exhibit sharp edges, the parting line between the component and the parting board must itself exhibit sharp edges. This line is filled with generous amounts of polyester stopper that is prevented from drying too quickly with a very small quantity of hardener. The edge is cut off with a sharp chisel. It is important that there is no damage to the master pattern surface. Other stopper residue is removed with a soft wooden rod and a cloth. Next, the parting board and the master pattern are treated several times with priming wax. Before demolding, the film release agent is applied with a small, finely poured sponge. The three-part centering screw unions are spaced closely along the mold's edge. First seal the sockets with plasticine and then bond them to the parting board with hot melt adhesive. The mold resin must be precisely dosed and thoroughly mixed. Don't forget to transfer the compound to another receptacle for the next step. The mold resin is then applied with a small modeling brush. It is paramount to avoid stirring in air bubbles along the parting line. That is why we always apply the brush in the same direction. Now the mold resin is left to gel. The brush marks show whether the mold resin has reached the correct gelling state. In this case, the mold is made up of several plies of glass fiber fabric. Low viscosity L1100 laminating resin is used and in conjunction with EPH294 hardener has a very long processing time. As a measure of preventing the formation of voids Within the corners and edges, a coupling layer of resin and cotton flock is mixed. First, the low viscosity laminating resin is applied to the entire surface of the mold.
Corners and edges are filled with a coupling layer. Additionally, the centering screw union's inserts are filled with the inspissated resin. The engine cowling features louvers that the mold is also to reproduce accurately in every detail. This too requires inspissated resin if voids are to be prevented from forming in the corners and edges. When laminating the mold's base structure, the corners and edges are first covered with small pieces of fabric. A twilled glass fabric with a weight per square meter of 163 grams is used as the first layer. Owing to its high drapeability, the twill can be applied free of creases in larger pieces. The next two plies of twilled glass fabric with a weight per square meter of 390 gram yield a somewhat greater wall thickness. This fabric too can be very easily draped. The mold is prevented from distorting when the fiber orientation is turned through 45 degrees from ply to ply. The last laminated ply is again 163 gram glass fabric. The first mold half is therefore complete and must now cure for at least 24 hours before processing is continued. After completion of the hardening process, the parting board is detached. Owing to the good release effect between the priming wax and the film release agent, the parting board and stopper compound detach easily from the master pattern and the mold's edge. The mating parts can now be positioned correctly after the centering screw union's inserts have been drilled clear. The master pattern and the first mold's half's parting line are once again treated with priming wax. Before the film release agent is applied, the priming wax should be left for several hours until it no longer contains any trapped air. The centering screws and the centering screw unions are inserted. The second mold half is laminated like the first. First we apply the mold resin. Once the resin has gelled, we fill the corners and edges with a coupling layer and laminate the supporting base structure with several plies of glass fiber fabric. Before demolding, the two mold halves must be left to thoroughly harden. The earlier the demolding, the greater the risk of mold distortion. 
Please also bear in mind that the resins harden very slowly at temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius. We recommend storing the molds for at least three days in a warm room before demolding. After loosening, the sampling screw unions first separate the two halves carefully at the edges. Owing to the thorough application of film release agent, the molding should not cause any problems whatsoever. When assembled, the two mold halves are trimmed along the edges with a multimaster and ground. Grinding dust is suctioned off immediately. Make sure to wear a mask at all times when sawing and grinding GRPs. New molds must be treated at least four times with priming wax before they can be used to make components. Before the first component is laminated, the film release agent is applied. Next, we'll be manufacturing the component in the female mold. The engine cowling is provided with a white overlay. In order to obtain this overlay, an overlay resin must be first applied to the mold. The overlay resin must gel before the glass laminate, consisting of 263 gram glass fabric plies, is laid up in the mold. 